All right, so uh, the Disney World. Do so you guys want to go over every world? Because I yeah, have like the list in front of me, so we don't. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think the best way to yes. go world by world and kind of just talk about the good, the bad, the demics. Yeah, because I was gonna say um, we could talk about like the story, how it felt, like you know, like the liveliness, you know, the music, pretty much everything that like a Disney World sort of like needs in Kingdom Hearts. So um, we could start. I'm gonna try to remember them in order. So like we could start obviously with Olympus. Um, I thought yeah. Olympus was dope. I thought it was sick how enormous they made it. Um, See, my favorite thing about Olympus, not to cut you off, is the no, fact you're fine. that we this is this is you know was this the fourth game we've seen Hercules in? No, it's like you know, Hercules. Yeah, dude, uh, like Olympus is in every single game. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> like, we, this we is the first first time. Yeah. Like, this is the first time, like, it's not in the Coliseum. Yeah. yeah. I think that's Which great. Which I think is so cool, because in Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and 3, you know, 1, we were in the Coliseum. 2, we had the Underworld, and now 3, we have the Mountain. I feel like it's really cool that Hercules is, as you know, a character in a world that we've seen every single game, but they're still giving it, like, a fresh take. And, you know, it's crazy, because, you know, we fi- we got the ending of the Hercules movie, finally. Like, I- I'm like, I'm going to be honest, Hercules is my favorite Disney movie. And when we when you when we when you first walk up to that scene and like you see the Titans standing there behind the gate, I was freaking out. I was like, <laughs> "Are you kidding? I get to fight the Titans! Oh, this yeah. is a dream come true!" It was it was amazing. Like hands down, one of the coolest experiences this game gave me was yeah. right off the bat. And one thing that I'm gonna point out, obviously, because like I'm gonna have to talk about it. Um, this is one of the only, actually, this and only one other world where you got to fight like aspects from the Disney like like villains or like enemies from the Disney movie in yeah, the world, you, yeah, definitely. which is something I'm going to bring up obviously once we close the discussion but like I I one thing I do have to point out before we like you know get back into like uh, Olympus and stuff is like I hate that we don't fight any Disney villains in any of these fucking worlds except yeah, in this yeah. world yeah definitely it's like it's like, I mean, even the ones that you do fight are usually just like oh like they turned into a heartless you know what i mean yeah, it's not yeah. like they're actual selves besides you know pirates obviously yeah so okay so fighting the titans was sick um i thought oh the fact God. that like zeus and the gods the npcs like all that stuff like everything was good they definitely upgraded it um a lot of people were bitching about the fact that there's no coliseum but honestly like when was the last time i feel like they when was like the last time you turned yeah yeah like, when was the last time you turned you your know? PS4 on, you jumped in there, and you're like, all right, I'm going to go fight the fucking Hades Cup. Like, I doubt I doubt anybody tr- – <laughs> like, it's just something people want to nitpick and complain about, honestly, in my opinion. Like, I – maybe it's just me. Like, I just – I don't care. Like, they could add that in DLC, and I'm fine. If it's on the base game, I don't care. That's fine. If anything, like, I'm kind of sick of going to Olympus, fighting a Coliseum, and then dipping. Like, I'm glad that they switched yeah. it up, you know? No, yeah, I, I hear you. Great. I think – I think the story was was you know really good in that it added a lot more. I think the Coliseum would have been a, a great addition, but yeah. I don't think it was necessary. That's what I'm saying. You know, like it would have been nice if it was there. Like, oh hey, we're back in Olympus, but like you know, like I'm I'm glad that we actually followed the movie this time. You know, also the the writing was funny, dude. Yeah, it was oh, like that was, was like a, fu- a funny world. Like I found myself genuinely laughing like a few times, and I was just like, Boy, wow. Hey. Yeah, seriously, dude. Like, and that's just something I could say about all the Disney worlds. Like, the Disney worlds was like the cute, happy, fun. Like, this is great. I'm smiling. I'm laughing. And, and then shit hits the fan. Oh yeah, then shit hits the fan. Then we'll talk about yeah. that. No, obviously. but like, I, I think that they were like cr- incredibly like self aware with like you know certain jokes and shit. Like, obviously the big one is like you know two point nine at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Wait. I forgot oh my about god. That. <laughs> I forgot that was about that. So funny. Well, because like that that cutscene at zero point two is called two point nine, but the fact that they just threw it out there to remind you, like, I just thought it was funny. Now, did you guys hear what happened with Phil? Like, the Phil's. Do you, I'm, yes. I'm assuming you all noticed that, like, Phil didn't talk. Yes. In the game. Yeah. I that was really cool. And, and I had to, did. yeah, and I had to, like, point that out to several people in my comments because they're like, oh, yeah, Olympus would have been sick, but Phil didn't say anything. And I'm like, okay, well, you don't know what happened. Like, you know, like, and t- do you guys know what happened? Like, I know Mark does, but. I, I know I heard about it after the fact because I knew, you know, I was like, why doesn't Phil talk? And, like, I had no idea about it. I, th- I think I saw some stuff on Twitter of uh, people saying that like the voice actor died and you know they kept him silent out of like respect for the voice actor yeah yeah so that was basically it so if people are watching this they don't know why it's because the japanese voice actor passed away so they didn't reprise the role therefore there's nothing in english and you know that makes sense i get it i just would have you know like there were there are plenty of moments in this game where i'm like say the line and i just want him to say games just once (laughs) but you know like it's fine (laughs) Yeah, it yeah. would have been nice, you know. I, I, honestly, the first time I played through it, I didn't realize that. 
And, you know, he's, I was sitting there like, Phil, I'm like waiting for him to say something or like, you know, make fun of Sora, tell him he's not a real hero, or, like something. Junior it was heroes. Just, like, it was like, oh, no, Phil. But then like, it was like brought to my attention like a minute after the fact. I'm like, I respect that. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I think it would have been one spot because I know that the whole game didn't want to have like any text like things, but I feel like if they gave maybe an exception to like things like that, like certain characters who didn't talk, I feel like I would have been like, okay with that. Just given how impressive it is, all the cutscenes that are spoken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I feel like they could have gave, you know, text bubbles to them, but you know, it's, it's not like an experience ruiner or anything like that at all. Yeah. Can we just say how great it is that there were no text bubbles though? Fuck yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. No, no static faces. Oh my God. It was great. Thank you. That was one of the that was one of the best improvements they made was the fact that everything was voice acted. The NPCs even were voice acted. Like if you talk to an NPC, they had their own voice. Yeah. Like it was just a beautiful. It made the world feel so much more real. And that really and connects it. to like you know Olympus because whenever we go to Olympus, it's like four people, and then like you know we we return to Olympus. Not only are we like not limited to the Coliseum anymore, but like you know there's people we could talk to them. Like you know we were doing little missions for them like throughout the first visit and stuff. Like dude, it's sick. You know, it's so yeah, cool. and like that just you know makes the worlds feel more alive, I guess. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what was really like cool. it's not just you, you, Donald and Goofy. Like there's actually people. here. Oh it's yeah, Kingdom Hearts three definitely. I felt like had the most Disney magic. It had the most 100%, immersion. 100%. Like I, I felt like I was in the world. You know what I mean? Like it, I felt so immersed inside of it. It was really beautiful. Yeah. So overall, like Olympus, like I love that they scaled it up. I love the way it looks. The music was fire. Like it was a great like introduction to the game and stuff. So um, yeah. I Olympus thought one more sick. thing. One more thing to bring up about Olympus is if you go back to Olympus after you beat it, the world's no longer on fire. They're rebuilding. It's like it's a completely different world, and it was just so cool. Yeah. That it wasn't just like they didn't just reuse everything. They made a like an you know an expansion to the world to be like, oh hey, this was happening after your adventure here. Yeah, it's like a second visit without there being a second visit, which is dope. Yeah, so you didn't have to go back, but if you did, like it was very, it was, it was, you know, it's a different world. It was great. Hundred percent. All right, cool. Fire. So Olympus was sick. Um, let's go on to what was next? I think Corona was next. Can Toy Corona? Story. Uh, Toy Story is technically. Toy next. Story. I think. Oh, I went to I went to Corona next because I'm an idiot. But okay, we'll talk about Toy Story. <laughs> um, so I mean, Toy hey, Story. the choice is yours. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about Toy Story. Um, hot take. I thought Toy Story sucked didn't suck but like it it just it wasn't anything like that blew my mind because we saw so much of it before the game came out you know like i mean i loved it i love the fact that toy story first of all like don't get me wrong one of my favorite disney movies ever in the world itself there was no problem with it and i actually uh, unpopular opinion i thought the gigas were awesome i thought the music was sick i thought the interactions between everybody was really cool but it's sort of the fact that they showed so much of it where i was sort of like uh, I'm not enjoying myself as much as I should. You know, it's like, I don't know. That That's was fair. just me. You know, that was just me. Yeah, I know. I definitely agree with you. I think, um, I think Toy Story was definitely, you know, it was good, but it's definitely one of the lower ones on my list. Yeah. Um, I, I think the music was great. I think it was a great addition to the game for Toy Story to finally be in there. You know, they've wanted it for so long, but yeah. I, I feel like the, the story wasn't very, I don't know. I felt like the story wasn't, very enticing to me, you know, well, because they didn't follow like really much from the movie at all. Hey, the and story's I just kind canon. of like those those and, little and that's, things. From and the that's movie. the thing. Toy Story to me was the only world that felt like a Kingdom Hearts two world in a sense where like we're there to carry out the Kingdom Hearts plot. You know what I mean? Like I I felt hey. like you, you know. Like, does that make canon. sense? Yeah, that's the in thing though. In Toy Story, yeah, it's, it's supposed canon. to, and that's why it annoys me because like I didn't like it. I thought it was way too Kingdom Heartsy. Like I thought, like you know, like you were saying with Olympus, how we're playing along with the movie, you know, and like I'm sure yes. other Disney worlds, we feel like we're playing along with the movie. Like I feel like you know, in order to like do the whole like, oh, this is like another canon like addition to the movie and stuff. Like when it comes to like Big Hero Six, it felt like you know, a Big Hero 6 sequel. When it came to Monstropolis, it felt like a Monstropolis, or like, you know, a Monsters, Inc. sequel. But when it came to Toy even Story... Though, even though it, it takes place after the movie, like, it's not part of the actual movie itself. Yeah. But obviously, we'll get to those. But yeah, I agree with you, because Toy Story was another one of those worlds that, you know, it, it had an original story to it. But I felt like the story was... It wasn't a Toy Story story. You're right. It was a Kingdom Hearts story, because the whole time we're dealing with them 
trying to find their friends and the, the whole you know, the world separated. I thought the fact that they made Buzz untrusting was a really good touch instead of just oh, the, always, exactly. oh, hey, you three disappeared out of nowhere, a talking duck. We're going to trust you. Finally, someone's like, wait, who the – are you? Yeah. So I, th- I thought that was refreshing to have Buzz not, uh, you know, not trust you right off the bat. Yeah. yeah and the, I, the yeah, characters exactly. were real good. Yeah. yeah the characters yeah. were definitely done um, really well. The only thing, <clears throat> the only thing is that um, it, it felt like it felt very like Kingdom Heartsy, like like Peter said, and it it didn't feel very. I'm like trying to find the word for it. It just didn't seem like a Toy Story story, like how they the world was like they're separated in the two. That doesn't, doesn't seem like a Toy Story kind of thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's that's my point, really. Is just like you know, I mean, I have no and like it's kind of weird because I kind of contradict myself later by like you know the organization members not doing enough, but I sort of feel like it, it just it felt like there was too much meddling in the world because it, it, you know basically it was just Young Master Zeno. I split the world into two and separated you know the gang and stuff. And I just, to me, like, it just, it, it felt like he meddled too much, you know? I mean, in other worlds, you don't really see, like, you don't see the organization members disrupting the natural balance of the world, like, in Toy Story. So, like, I think that's sort of why it stuck out to me as, why did I not really feel like I just played a Toy Story world? I felt like it was a Kingdom Hearts, like, obviously it's Kingdom Hearts, so it's going to feel like Kingdom Hearts, but, like, it, it just sort of felt, you know, we were sort of trying to fix, like, undo things that, like, the Kingdom Hearts universe did to the Toy Story universe, if that makes sense. That's fair. That's fair. Now, one thing I want to point out that's kind of off topic, but kind of same time on topic. Mm-hmm. Now, speaking of young Xehanort, you know the, you know the cutscene uh, where Sora's, like, trying to hit young Xehanort? He keeps kind of, like, vanishing, and he's talking, and Sora's just trying to hit him. Mm-hmm. I feel like the cutscenes look so weird with these Keyblades. Like, I feel like I kind of want the, the cutscenes to be the Kingdom Key. Just because it looks like a like you know, Kingdom Key is a very solid looking Keyblade. I just feel like it's kind of funny to be like trying to hit Xehanort and you have like you know some crazy Keyblade, like the Olympus Keyblade, which is probably the one you would have at that time. And it just feels like it just looks weird. Yeah, I mean that's sort of something that Kingdom Hearts has always been guilty of. You know, I, I yeah. do I do wish that they had like the preset like cutscenes. Like when you go back into theater mode, obviously it changes, but like I don't know, and especially in the CG cutscenes, they'll always change it because those are like predetermined obviously but like i don't know like I, that's something that like i've always thought too especially like in like the later parts of the game where like Sora's trying to like threaten larkzine but he pulls out like the winnie the pooh keyblade i'm like Sora, really dude like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's <was> funny <laughs> yeah because like, like, like it definitely made like you know the more serious cutscenes, like you know towards the end feel a bit it kind of turned me off a little bit i don't know like yeah. it, it, it was hard to take them seriously Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's a it's a really cool you know thing that that they pay attention to. Like, oh, the keyblade I have on is the keyblade he's holding. I feel like that's a really good like detail to to notice. But I know someone who they they did the final fight using the kingdom key just because like I can't take Sora seriously if you know he's threatening someone and he has his whatever after. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like no, it's it, I feel like because there are times when like I would be doing a major cutscene and I was using ever after to use magic and that was like the last thing I did and I was like this just looks ridiculous now. But one thing I will give them credit on is uh, one of the things that blew me away right after that with Toy Story is the fact of how smooth everything loads. So it's like you're in Andy's room, right? And you run up the wall, walk, jump out the window, and you're in his yard, and it's just so seamless and so smooth of a transition. Yeah, exactly. And, like, I feel like – and, again, since we're talking about worlds in general, we can say, like, general things about the worlds. Like, I I, – am I the only one that noticed it was very obvious what worlds got worked on more than others? I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I, that I, I, to me, I don't know. Like, feel like when there's like, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I feel like a world like Olympus clearly had a lot of development time. And obviously, since it was revealed first, like, it makes sense. Good. I feel like Good. then when you go to like, and I know that there was kind of like a copyright sort of uh, rights issue with Frozen where like they couldn't use enough. But I feel like Frozen, they sort of just made in like two seconds. Whereas like Olympus yeah, and like, Tangle, yeah. they, they paid a lot of attention to the detail of the worlds and stuff. Yeah, that's one thing yeah. I didn't like about Frozen. Like, how you had to go through the map, like, three times just to get it on with the story, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, like, we could talk about Frozen later on and stuff. You know, like, like what I'm saying, though, is, like, especially with Toy Story, like, there was a lot of detail. Even though, like, I didn't really enjoy it as much as others, there's other things I didn't like. The attention to detail with Toy Story when it comes to, like, the advertisement for other, like, Square Enix properties, like, the figures have, like, price tags and stuff. I thought that was amazing. Like, it was so cool. And every single store had, like, a bunch of different merchandise in it. Like, I just thought that was one of the coolest parts of Toy Story for sure. 
Yeah, the world the world immersion there was was definitely really good. Hundred percent. I loved like the toy designs for like Sword Donald Gooby too. That was like A plus. Loved it. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, they look great. Okay. Um. So Toy Story seems like it got pretty much covered. Um. So we could talk about Corona now. Oh, I love Corona. It's my, Dude, Corona's it's my great. favorite. Top my favorite, favorite wearing pants. <laughs> Yo, dude, no, but like, I mean, okay, so like, I'll be completely honest, and I was honest with this in my Let's Play, dude. I've never seen Tangled in my life. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> change that. Change that. Go I, watch it. Right no, now. but like the yeah, thing is, but like, <laughs> it, it's weird though because like, dude, I never saw Tangled, but that was like one of my favorite worlds, like hands down. I thought Tangled was absolutely fantastic. I think it had like some of the best music best visuals best story i thought everything to a t was just phenomenal about tangled i absolutely and definitely like the heartless bo- you know like the heartless boss at the end was definitely like one of my favorites out of the whole game next to frozen's that was my favorite heartless boss fight and, and don't even get me started on how interactive the characters are in that world oh my god dude. oh my god rapunzel and like flynn and like even like Dude, everything was so good. Everything about Tangled was just amazing for me. Like that's all I, I can really it. say is it was it was yeah. perfect. It was perfect. That that world filled me with just like a, a magical feeling. Like just the entire time I was there. Like there were certain worlds in the game where, like, sort of towards the end, I was like, all right, like I because the worlds are so long. I've been here for so long. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go on. But Tangled, I was like, no, dude, I want to stay. Like that's I want what I'm more. Saying. <laughs> and since like I didn't watch the movie going through it i felt like i was watching the movie it was it was cool like i'm glad i had that experience with it you know so like it was, it was yeah great. it does it does follow the the movie uh quite a lot so i could definitely see see that yeah and like again and i mean i'm only we could talk about even like going back to the worlds a little bit too if it's like important but i think going back to tangled how you can explore the whole kingdom dude that place is sick i love the kingdom yep. itself there's a yeah. lot of stuff that you normally wouldn't explore on the actual first run through. Like when I, I went back to try to find some like you know lucky emblems, and there was a there's a lot to the to the uh, kingdom that like you know you don't you didn't re- you could you could play the whole game without noticing it's there. Hmm. Hundred percent. Hell yeah. So I guess we can all just agree. Tangled was fire like, overall. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Definitely. Like, everything was good. World. Great keyblade. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So now we talked about Corona. Wait, um, wait. There is one thing I want to throw in with Tangled real quick. Sure, I'm sure. Sorry. Go for it. Go, go so, for it, dude. Uh, that one, the one fight that you do after the whole scene on the boat with the with the lanterns, I thought that was stunning. Like you're fighting Heartless, Beautiful. and there are just lanterns filling the sky. Like I stopped to take a picture. Yeah, dude. That was like amazing. Like I, I again, like I said, like I thought that like even like Marluxia was like perfect for that world. Like I thought it was 100%. like it was sick. Like it was so so good. But um, yeah, and. The- in the cut scene where you see like Sora down goofy looking up at the lanterns, I was just like, Oh my God. Yeah. Like this looks like this is so magical. And that fight after like the whole thing that, that whole part just like had me so excited. <laughs> yeah. And I gotta say, you know, like it was like the best way to say it is like, it was like magical Corona overall was like, just, it was, it was pure fucking magic. I absolutely love the hell out of it. Um, okay. So after Corona, we could talk about Monstropolis. Monsters I think uh, <laughs> Mon- Monsters, <laughs> Mon- Monsters Inc. was was pretty cool. I like that. Um, you know how it, I like how they had its own story, but they had a lot of elements from the movie there. Yes, uh, I like that. The only thing about Monsters, Inc., it just felt very linear to me, like the entire world, like how it worked out. It it, it didn't seem like um, it just didn't seem very story driven. It was just like, hey, go after the big bad, who is basically just Randall at the end and he's kind of making you like run through this huge factory yeah i I feel like it didn't do much for the story but i really did enjoy like the changes from the movie and how you can see how it came after the movie and whatnot Mm -hmm. yeah exactly and like again like the the reason why i preferred this one over toy story because obviously it follows the same formula where like it takes place after the the original like disney movie and stuff I thought the way that, because again, this felt like a sequel to Monsters, Inc., you know, like, and I think Vanitas, like, meddled perfectly. He really just showed up at the end, you know, that type of thing. And, like, I just, I thought, like, overall, the way that they continued the movie and, like, the plot of the movie and stuff, that was, I thought that was beautifully done. I wish Toy Story did that more. Like, it's not like Vanitas came and fucked the world up and now we have to fix it. That's how Toy Story went, but with Monstropolis, it felt like an actual sequel. And again, like, Randall was sick. 
Um, like you said, it was it was linear. Like I, it did feel like a giant hallway. But the thing is, like the w- the way like it was like presented to us and the way that the story was like going, I, it just it felt like a sequel to me. So like I didn't really mind the level design if it was like that. I also well, thought what? it was really cool how the um, that was the world for the unversed because I feel like the unversed are the most like monstrous. Oh, perfect! It was sort of fire. Characters and they and only they're, showed they're the up there, powerful. right? Didn't they only show up yes. there? So that's why it was yeah, awesome. It was perfect. It was fire. If you don't count the Keyblade graveyard, but yeah. Like, Cool. I mean, one thing I thought was really cool about the Monsters Inc. world was the fact that, you know, in the movies, we, you know, they're at the Scare Factory, of course, but we only really see, you know, the laugh floor. We see a little bit of the door, you know, where they keep all the doors, but like we didn't really see too much more of the uh, factory. So the fact that we got to explore it, you know, whether it be only like small parts of it, we still got to see a lot more to the world than we have ever seen throughout the movie. So I thought that was a really cool expansion. Exactly. Stuff. And that's one of the things yeah, that I was. said in my world ranking video where I was like, the reason why I, another reason why I liked it is because we saw so much more of the world than we even saw in the movie. Exactly. It was a so, lot of brand it was, new stuff. yeah, exactly. It was so limited in the movie, like what they showed us, you know, when it came to like the factory and stuff. But we saw all these things where I'm like, dang, like this, like, this is crazy, you know, how much they expanded the, 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 um, the Monsters Inc. like universe and stuff. I thought that was, it was fire, dude. Like I left that world like incredibly satisfied. Yeah, that, it felt like a big world, too. It's huge. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot to it. Absolutely. Tim, anything you want to add to the Monsters, Inc. world? So uh, I definitely found it, like, per, how they, like, you know, intertwined, like, the Disney with the, you know, whole Kingdom Hearts thing very, like, um, they, they did it in a, in a great way just because, you know, Randall always wanted to be on top. He always wanted to be number one. And, you know, having... Um, Benita's there, you know, with the whole negative emotion thing. That was, like, perfect to fit in with Randall's character. Exactly. Agreed. And one more thing yeah, I think before we, like, move on, really, is, like, I, I love I love how they put the perfect organization members in each world. I thought every organization member in every single world they went to was, like, it was, like, spot on. Like, it was absolutely just perfect. Yeah, now, no, we just talk about that. Benitas fit that world a lot. Oh yeah, he's my he's my boy, dude. He's my favorite villain. And I got to talk about the ending of the Monsters Inc. world real quick. Um, oh my god, the <laughs> ending! The ending was the best thing I've ever seen. Like the, that dude. ending. Oh my god, best thing ever. Like I whoever wrote that ending deserves yeah. like. Like a seriously, a, a, like a round of applause for whoever came up with that, dude. That dude, was so like, did, yo, did let's they... throw Finitas into a door, then into another. Like, oh, like yo, when I watched that cutscene the first time, I stood up, I was cheering, I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Hell yeah, dude. No, absolutely. So like, I just gotta say, like that ending specifically, just because of like, I I loved it. I love the fact that Vanitas just got like thrown into a thousand doors. It, <laughs> it also made me upset though, how like easily it was able for just like a disney character to stop Benitas. <laughs> and we're gonna talk about that when we get to where the hell is it i think it's like story yeah because i wrote down the like character development stuff we'll talk about like characters and stuff about that specifically like um we could talk about them within the realm of like the world and stuff but i don't know i i dude i love Benitas. i thought it was hysterical i loved watching him get bodied <laughs> yeah it was funny yeah i oh, literally yeah, like started was laughing so ever. hard when i saw that Oh, I was like, dumb. I literally couldn't stop laughing. I was just like, what? <laughs> I yeah. was like, excuse me. <laughs> that was using the world so well in like the writer's eyes. Like they just used the Monsters Inc. world so perfectly with that. Like it was such a good ending because obviously they're not going to have Sora and Vanitas fight right there. And that they can't have, um, they can't have Ventus become like, you know, get, oh, get unlocked that early in the story, mm-hmm. but they wanted to hint at it. So I felt like it was a really good way to be like, hey, we're, we're hinting at it, but Sully's going to make sure that doesn't happen just yet. Hell yeah, dude. Absolutely. All right, cool. So overall, Monstropolis was solid. Um, All right, this is where I know, like, I'm just going to go off on a fucking tangent. So I'll try to leave this to you guys as much as I can. Uh, We could talk about <laughs> we could talk about Arendelle. And obviously, I'm just going to start off with saying, fuck Arendelle. Yo, I, hate, fuck I, hate fuck that, I hated that fucking world so much. Listen, you guys are crazy because I love that world. And I, I, that's, yo, I like it that just follows, <laughs> it follows the movie almost to a T. That that's an unpopular opinion, but I actually really like that world like a lot. And I'm, I'm playing Arendelle right now, my my second run through, and I'm a fan of Arendelle. Like I love, uh, you know, I love the fact that you're exploring a lot, like you know, so much more to the world of Frozen. Like I love the character development <coughs> that you're seeing, like a little bit more than what happened in the movies. Like it's it's following the story pretty well. Uh, 
I think it's a fun. I mean, I felt like the ice labyrinth in the beginning was kind of interesting. It can get. I can see if you uh, don't get lucky enough to kind of figure it out pretty quickly, it can get I very. I was stuck aggravating. in that shit for fucking forty five minutes. It, it, I actually got the, the through that pretty quick, but like that, that was like the one thing. <laughs> I'm an idiot though. So <laughs> the, the, the labyrinth was like the one thing of the world I did like though. I like, did it, like it, it too. It took me pretty. Pre- I was pretty like you know quick through that, but it would definitely like did more for me than the rest of it. Having yeah, to like redo it three time fucking times, like yeah. For me, like the the thing with it is like I mean I like Frozen as a movie. I don't love it, Mark. I know you love it, but like <laughs> like I, I, like I I don't know what it was. I think it's just because like okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Basically, ninety percent of this world was climbing up a mountain three times. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, like that's why yeah. I didn't like it. You know, I, I mean, I think that's my biggest flaw with it. Don't get me wrong. The the music is on fire, and we'll get to the music and stuff actually right after the world. Frozen's like when you're exploring the dun 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 dun, dun and I'm like, oh my god, bro, fire, absolute fire. Bro, what about Sora making his appearance and let it go? Like I thought that was hilarious. Oh my god, dude, my video got fucking, uh, it got a copyright claim on it. Like it didn't get taken down, but basically like Disney monetized it, so now there's ads on it. And I'm like, good luck. I get, I get like fucking 20 views total on these Let's Play episodes. That sucks for you. But like, you know, like, I mean, like, <laughs> but like, I don't know. I thought that was funny because like, I think it was uh, for Let It Go because for Do You Want to Build a Snowman? You know, she was talking over it. So like, we didn't really actually have to hear the song. But yeah. like, dude, I turned the volume down. But like from my TV, it was so slight. You could hear it where Disney's like, nope, boink, that's ours. I'm like, yo, fuck it, man. Bro, don't mess with YouTube right now. They, they, they're, they're serious, bro. They took down a... Uh... They took on Trader Tip Nick's channels because he had CP in his title. That was funny. And we're not going to say what it was because I don't want that word in here. But, like, overall, nah, that entire nah. thing was that entire thing was fucking stupid. That entire thing was 100%, fucking stupid. 100%, but let's not talk about that. Yeah. My bad for bringing it up. But, um, but Arendelle, I thought it was, you know, something I realized when I was on my second playthrough of Arendelle that I realized the first time. You know the scene, the part where you have to find Olaf's three pieces? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I hate that. And they had, they, had the, they had the two decoy pieces. <laughs> I realized that if you <laughs> bring back one of the detoy, uh, decoy pieces, they'll build him with the decoy pieces. Dude, that's my beef. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, hold on. That's my beef. Because I thought you had to find the incorrect pieces to find the real piece. So I fucking brought the wrong body back to him like th- four times. And I felt so, so stupid. Funny. Dude, it t- I-, I had to cut like 40 minutes out of my Let's Play episode of it because I kept bringing back the wrong pieces. I- <laughs> Dude, I'm an idiot. Dude, I couldn't find it. It took me forever to find it. Yeah, I, so I got funny. it right away my first run through so i was lucky enough to just one two three but on my second run through i was kind of like what happens if i bring like the giant body back oh my so i God. bought it and they built it can... with the giant no, one and he has dude. a cutscene where he says stuff and everything and i thought that was really funny i thought that's what you had to do like i brought back the big fucking fat body and i'm like oh this will be funny but then i realized that's like so I, I literally couldn't find his body and i was getting so irritated so like i guess like <laughs> you know me getting lost in the labyrinth that stupid Olaf thing, like, I think that could be affecting what I thought about the world. I was getting frustrated a lot, so perhaps that's clouding my judgment of it. You know, I'm not saying it sucked. Like, when I was saying fuck Frozen, I was just sort of joking, but uh, it was just, it was just, it was the least enjoyable for me, and I think, obviously, like, m- my bad experience with the game and me being a stupid idiot sort of influences that. <laughs> but, like, I mean, that's I how I feel about Pirates, so I, I can't disagree with that. Okay. No, but, like, I... I feel like the whole like almost shot for shot like you know let it go was definitely unnecessary they just like we that in there yeah you definitely your mouth. i don't know i mean <laughs> as someone who really enjoyed frozen like i thought frozen oh frozen no was frozen's great high up it was kind of high up on my list but i can't admit like it felt like the labyrinth was a little bit like filler and like climbing up the mountains three times three times you know i kind of felt like it wasn't as developed i guess as the other ones yeah but I just had such a great time, like with the scenery and the characters there, that it, it really made that up for me. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, no, the uh, that was my favorite boss fight though in the entire game was the this the wolf heartless thing. That was awesome. Yeah, it was cool, and the the, tr- the Trinity Sled thing was actually really sick. Yo, like, that mini game is fire, fun. man. I don't care what anyone says; it's way better than the Olympus one. That that mini game is awesome. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. Okay, so you guys let Frozen. I'm indifferent because I'm stupid and didn't know how to play it. Um, so let's move on. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about my favorite world. I thought Pirates was 100% fire. Oh, so my God, I'm yeah. Gonna, I was going to mute myself now. Okay, ex- no. Yo, fuck okay, off, Mark. Okay, we could say, we could say. <laughs> fuck get Crabs. Out of the, the crabs. Yeah, get out, out of the way. Crabs. Get out of the way. That was stupid. I thought that was stupid. Yo, fuck Crabs. 
Okay. Right, fuck the crabs. I loved pirates. Like, honestly, I'm like, this is so cool. It's like, collect 300 crabs. I'm like, oh, they got to be everywhere. 20 minutes later, I'm like, I have three. What yeah. the fuck? <laughs> that, that was ridiculous. Then someone someone gave me a hit to go to the fort, and that saved me because there's so many yeah. crabs in the fort. But I'm like, this is so ridiculous. Like, they're, they're saying, find 300 crabs, and they're barely found. And then it doesn't tell you that, you know, that's specifically like, oh, hey, you need to find – uh, these crabs to help build up your ship. So I go, I go do the Luxor fight like I'm an idiot, and I'm like, oh great, I should be good. And he destroys me. Oh, Ten yeah, times that... later, I'm like, I'm nowhere close. Like, I, like there's some times where I got pretty lucky, I got pretty good at like shielding. I'm like, okay, like I'm playing how I should play. Like I'm doing this so smart, and he's wrecking me. And then my friend who's playing next to me is like, oh, you got to level up your ship. I'm like, what? So you got to get yeah, the crabs. Definitely like five what? times to realize oh yeah i should definitely level up my ship and it was easy like after Destroy you know i got to level, level up my ship came back Dude, with a I, vengeance i knew that i could level it up but i just didn't i yeah, just like too. went anyway and i just i just suffered through it and it i it made it really difficult but it was kind of fun. <laughs> of course, dude. But um, overall I, though I, like i i think when it comes to like disney worlds i think in terms of Music, visuals, exploration. I said that weird, but exploration. Um, <laughs> I, I thought that Pirates just was the only world that really blew my mind. I thought the whole like ship exploration. Dude, there's like 12 different oh islands you can go to to explore and find emblems and treasure chests. And like I, I feel like in terms of worlds that I was glad that I paid a second visit to after I was done with it. Pirates overall was just like superior to like every other world. It had so much content in it. And I think that yeah. I, I love the ship battles too. I thought they were fire. So like I one agree. thing I, I one thing I, I liked about Pirates was that it how they changed up, you know, underwater combat. Mm -hmm. Um it felt so it didn't even feel feel like a chore, like, you know, with Atlantica and shit like that. Yes. Hundred percent. I thought that the swimming mechanics in this game, although they're swimming mechanics, like, you know, kind of comparing you know definitely more intuitive than <laughs> yeah. the last games yeah but i i thought i, I it just i thought it was sick i thought like, and but like it's not just you know specific like dude there's like you could swim underwater anywhere and there's like a ton of stuff you could find and like a ton of th places you can like swim to and stuff i thought that this is the only disney world where like it felt like a different video game yeah it was it was definitely the most rewarding world to go back to i found i actually ended up finding all the lucky emblems and all the treasures like in the whole game and let me tell you, Pirates was the hardest one. One hundred percent, because it's huge. It's the it's like hands down. It's the biggest world. Like no, no doubt. Yeah, no. and it it's so it's so cool though. And the pirate ship gameplay, they they give you a lot to do post game after that. And uh, if you level the ship up all the way, you get a little uh, special surprise. Oh yeah, I've heard. I'm excited to go and try to get that special surprise. Someone told me what it was, and I was like, now I need to level my ship up all the way so I can get that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But nah, dude, like overall, like for me personally, I thought Pirates is the best world. I thought it was fire. I loved everything about it. Like I said, it felt like I was playing like Sea of Thieves and then I was playing like Assassin's Creed, you know, exploring Port Royal and stuff. Dude, it was fire. I I, I can't I can't praise Needed Pirates any higher. Or sharks. <laughs> one, one thing I would point out about Pirates though is I feel like they tried to condense the story from the movies down way too much. And that's the thing, because they skipped an entire movie. You know, Pirates in um in Kingdom Hearts two it was Pirates one, and then they yeah, this skipped was Pirates three. Yeah, like uh, well, yeah, it was Pirates three. So like they kind of like, missed like the you like you need to have watched Pirates to enjoy that. Yeah, it it was a bit confusing for me. Like there were times in the in the story, like when Jack just turned like into all the crabs. I was just like, what? Okay, that's not Why? canon. That doesn't fucking happen in the movies. I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know. That, that's why I was like, literally, like, wait, like, what is going? Yeah, on? Yeah, no, that like, didn't fucking happen. Jack? When I when that why happened, was... I was so confused. <laughs> no, but like, it <laughs> like, definitely like, it definitely fit the theme, you know, like Davy Jones, like heart in the chest with the black box and all that shit. And I think if anything, that kind of fuels like what we could talk about later, where like that kind of like dropped a hint. And I made a video about this like so long ago. How, like, I figured, like, you know, you know, in the trailer, like, Luxord was like, oh, well, Luke Sword. Fuck Luke Sword. It's Luxord. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. Dude, when I heard them, when I heard them say his name, I was like, no, shut up. Dude, it hurt. Dude, it, it hurt. hurt. It, like, hurt like, it hurt the it, community. It felt like, like, <laughs> it felt like a personal attack. I was like, hell yeah. Luke but, um, Sword? 
But no, this was the only world where I felt, you know, the the box sort of had like a significance to the world because obviously, you know, like in the box, it's uh, the heart of Davy Jones. So if anything, that that sort of gave us a clue as to like what's actually in the box. And we could talk about that later. But like, you know, I just love, I love again, again, like that's proper incorporation of the themes of Kingdom Hearts with the Disney world. So it did like a really good job with that. Yeah, they did that good. I I just feel like the story, I I feel like they could have honestly made the world, like extended the story, like made the world longer story-wise and had like maybe some more cutscenes or something to make it a little bit more, a little bit more understood. Because even people that have seen the movie, like got like confused. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I I feel like they could have expanded upon maybe the story of it Mm -hmm. more, but as far as everything else in the world, it was, it was like the best 100 percent, dude 100 percent. all right now one so. thing i want to point out is uh is, did anyone else think that the final scene with where it's raining that with that the scene in the game looked better than it did in the movie dude, oh yeah i thought that was i thought that dude i couldn't tell like if that was ripped out of the movie or if that was in the game that's crazy like, i was literally like in, it looked in, beautiful like some of the characters literally looked like like real people. I was like, is this yeah. a real like guy like acting right Dude, now? Those, like, those, <laughs> those rendered cutscenes were fucking phenomenal. Like they only did that, and I think um I think they only did that in Frozen and in Pirates in terms of uh, Disney worlds. But like that's just another thing where like Pirates stood out to me when they did those cutscenes and they showed what they could do with the Unreal Engine four and stuff. Like and they showed why they brought Pirates in. I just thought everything was fucking sick. And and one more thing, that Pirates is the only world that it did, like I said, other than Olympus, sort of, was that we got to fight the villain of the movie. Why was Pirates the only why was Pirates the only movie like why was that the only world we could do that? That annoys me. It was I would love to beat the crap out of Randall, honestly. That's what I'm saying. You know, like you could have you could have done anything, like really. I mean, I guess like sort of in Frozen, you sort of did it. I mean, I I don't I don't really know. Like I said, like it's just it's weird. Uh, Same thing with with Tank. Technically, you fight Mother Gertrude, but it's like you fight her heartless. So it's like yeah. So and again, like Olympus, like you know, the Titans sort of makes up. I wanted to fight Hades, you know. So like the fact that like again, this is the only world where we got to fight the villain of the movie. That just makes it stand out that much more to me. Yeah. So, okay, cool. So, obviously, you know, we all like pirates and stuff. Fuck crabs. Cool. Um, <laughs> fuck crabs. Fuck crabs. That's, that's all I have to say about pirates. Fuck crabs. Yeah, so, um, oh, before I get to San Francisco, yeah, I forgot to write down um, 100 Acre Wood. Uh, eh. Honestly, the, the fact that it was the same minigame three times was stupid. That pissed me off. Yeah. If it was if it was that short, but there were three different minigames, I could place it differently. Yeah. The fact that it was just like a retextured minigame with like little gimmicks that they changed up, that was lazy as fuck. And I feel like they just shoehorned it in there. I, w- I was really excited to go back there Me too. and see what kind of minigames they could add. And like after I left there, I was like, why did they even put this in the game? That's what I'm saying. I feel like they just <laughs> had to shoehorn it in there, you know? Up. Like they, it's just because, like, oh, Winnie the Pooh, Sora has a good relationship with Winnie the Pooh. It's like, yeah, but. I hated this world because you made me do the same game three times. <laughs> like, and, and I mean, like the game was like, it was like fun. Like it was kind of cool how they made it like sort of like a candy crush thing, but they definitely could have done like a lot more like with different games. Like think about all the classic kingdom games. Like they could have like, yeah, I don't know. They could have so, done a lot of shit there. Yeah. Basically the cell shading, like the graphics and everything that was like f- perfect. Like, I, I thought like visually that was one of the better worlds. It just pisses me off. They didn't do anything with it, and like I said, it just felt like wicked shoehorned in. So I mean, I don't know. They just had to throw that in there. Also, you're kind of condensed to that one area. Exactly. And, and, and it's that kind of thing that makes me feel like maybe, like, you know, I, it makes me feel like maybe certain things, like aspects of the game, were a bit rushed. Yeah. Okay. So 100 Drake Wood. I just wanted to like rush through that because there's really not that much to talk about. Um, and the last but not least, uh, we'll talk about. Um, We'll talk about San Francisco, and then we can move into, like, the Kingdom Hearts, like, original worlds. So, um, San Francisco, my favorite Disney movie in the past 20 years. Um, it was exactly what I expected it to be. Um, I thought the music was top tier. I thought the, the continuation of the story, again, it follows the formula that I like, where, like, you know, Riku is, like, meddling, but it's not, like, overwhelming. You know, it doesn't feel like a Kingdom Hearts story taking over a Disney world. It feels like, a you know, it was properly incorporated, and it all worked together really well. The only thing with me that really pissed me off about the world was, one, the limit with Baymax is garbage. It pissed me off. And then um, the fact that you can't make the map bigger was, like, hard because I got lost a lot in the world. Yeah, I, I can agree with you there that uh, about, like, the map. And I, I think that like the final fight with 
with Baymax was the like the fight was a little bit underwhelming, I guess, mm-hmm. because of like the different mechanics of it. But um, Big Hero Six, and you know, I get a lot of shit for this opinion, but it was it was kind of one of my least like uh, worlds. It was kind of a, a bit lower for me. I I didn't feel. Um, I don't know. Like, I definitely think the world was built very good for the game's mechanics. Um, and I think that the story, like, from the movie, like, it added a lot to it. But I felt like for the entire world, like, up until the end, I didn't feel very compelled by it. Yeah. Like, any... And I think one of the things where, like, I mentioned earlier where I was talking about how if you can really, like, you can feel what worlds had more attention to them and which ones didn't. I feel like Big Hero 6 was one of the worlds where they kind of, like, rushed it. I feel like I was, I felt like I was in that world for, like, an hour. And then, like, everything else was, like, longer, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that I was definitely a, feel like it was you, a you, world. So. You definitely feel like it was, you know, kind of like second nature kind of sort of thing. Like, um, it, you, it was definitely in and out kind of thing. Yeah, and I love, but I did love, like, because, I mean, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I love Spider-Man games. So, like, I, that game felt oh, like yeah. Spider-Man to me. You know, like, how you're swinging around. Like, you know, you can run up buildings. You can, like, shoot to the top of them. I thought that, like, that was, again, one of the things that I was looking for with Disney Worlds were, like, what stands out to me. And I thought the fact that you're just, I'm, I felt like I was Spider-Man. Like, I really did. Like, flying around the city like that and shit. Like, I thought that was, like, it was it was so cool. Yeah, it was a, it was a great world for the mechanics of the game. And I don't know. I, I was really excited about that world, but you know, after after getting through it, I was like, I feel like they could have done more, though. I think it's again. I definitely. It, yeah, it goes back to the point where I feel like it was it was rushed. That world was. There's no doubt in my mind that was the last world they did because it was the last one they showed next to 100 Acre Wood. It just it felt rushed, and it did, and that kind of like hurts me a little bit, you know. And like, it's weird that they announced it so early. Like that was one of like the first worlds they announced for the yeah, game. Just with the concept yeah, and that definitely was like one of the ones I was most excited about. Like I have fucking Baymax tattooed on my leg, and I was definitely a bit let down with that one. Yeah. So I mean, again, like I thought it. The music was sick. I thought like especially like the night music when you're traveling around the um like the world and stuff. That was all fire. Like, I thought the interactions with, like, all the characters and stuff was, like, super cool. I thought Riku fit the bill, like, perfectly for that world. It was so, it was sick. Like, the whole, like, nanobot, like, uh, thing, the bugs or whatever. Um, I forgot what the official name was for, like, the blocks or whatever. Like, that was all, like, super cool. I love how they brought back, you know, the original Baymax, like, model and stuff. It was, it was, just, yeah, like, it was good. For someone who loves the movie, like, I thought it was, like, it was really well executed. I love the fact that you have to fight the original Baymax. I thought that was such, like, a you know, a good story that could, like, you know, that's such, like, a great sequel story. Like, something that's really, like, you know, that's, like, there's emotion with that. Like, you know, that's, that's, I feel like if we were to get Big Hero 6 too, I feel like this is the story I would want 100%. that movie to be. 100%. So I thought that was a really, like, you know, amazing point to this, uh, to this world. Hell yeah. So, yeah, overall, Big Hero 6 was fire. Um, it was one of my favorites, but um, obviously there were things that could have been done a little bit better. I think my bias gets in the way because that movie is, whew, oh my God, it hurts me. Um, oh my god! <laughs> has, has there been a single world that we ha- that we haven't deemed fire at the end? What's that? Is there has there been a single world that we haven't deemed fire at the end of our discussion of it? No, because Disney worlds were fucking perfect, man. Like, I mean, I but thought they were yeah. I thought they were all perfect. Like, they were great, except for maybe like 100 Acre Wood, because I just felt like that was lazy and it was shoehorned in. But um, okay, you're right, you're right. So yeah, now that we're done with the Disney worlds, I think we can all agree. Like overall, Disney worlds are fire. Uh, they were awesome. Um. So now let's move on to like the biggest disappointment for me. I fucking they dude, they took Twilight Town, they stepped on its neck, they threw it in a lake, fished it out, threw it on the fucking highway, ran it over with an 18 wheeler and lit it on fire. I think that they what I mean, they really what they feel. did to Twilight Town was unforgivable. Yeah, it, 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 it was really from. disappointing. I was looking so forward to climbing up the clock tower and being able to like take a picture yeah. at like the top or something. I, I think that the whole underground sewers and like the connectivity of it and like the like the people and all the things that were in there were really great. It just it definitely could have been bigger and had more going on there. That shit was tiny. Yeah, v- very small. Yeah, like and oh yeah, yeah. So like the cooking mini games, like I I suck at them, but they're fun. Also, something that bothered me is that they don't call him Ratatouille; that they call him. Um, they never Shaka. call him Ratatouille. Or, or they are calling him. Yeah, Rem- his name's Remy. Remy. Yeah, Remy. Yeah, Remy. they were called Remy. Remy. Yes, yeah. But I mean, I, it's funny because like I was, I went to Disney after the game came out, and me and my friend, you know, my buddy, we both we both play Kingdom Hearts, of course, and we saw a thing of Remy, and we just yelled, "Little Chef!" And everyone's like, <laughs> "What?" 
Like, oh he's God. no longer Remy to me. He's he's forever Little Chef. Yeah, but like like I said, like what they did do with Twilight Town, like adding the NPCs and stuff, that was like it was really cool. Like the music sounded great. I I'm just I'm so mad that it's basically just the tram area and then like the mansion and the sewers are wicked small too. Like, you can't even go in the mansion. That's what I'm saying, dude. And they foreshadowed yeah. the whole thing where it's like, oh yeah, day to Twilight Town, day to Twilight Town. We have to get rock spec, dude. I would have put a million dollars on the fact that like the midway point of the game, we would have went back to Twilight Town. We would have had to go into day to Twilight Town. We would have had to like find Roxas horror or his data or something, fight some cool ass boss, and then you know Twilight Town would have felt bigger. We would have like been able to go in the mansion. We would have been able to like you know some foreshadowing to nominate or something. Maybe no, they just they were just like not nah, fuck that. I, I agree with you, and that would have been a very good, like, midway point, like how Kingdom Hearts 2 had, like, the Thousand Heartless Battle, like, midway point. Yeah, and we'll get to that when we talk about, like, story and stuff, but, like, I thought Twilight Town would have been, like, the pivotal, like, best thing for that to happen, so, like, whatever, yeah. fuck that, dude. Um, but Twilight Town, like, overall, it's Twilight Town, but, like, they just, they, they robbed us, they robbed us, um... So, what else is there? There's, uh... I mean, we could talk about, like, the Keyblade Graveyard just as a world, oh, yeah, like, yeah, not yeah. about the story. Oh, yeah, no, so Keyblade Two. Graveyard. Yeah, no, absolutely. I thought that they, it was, like, a huge upgrade. I loved it. A lot of people are like, oh, it was a hallway, it was a maze. It's like, dude, I don't, like, what more do you want them to do with it? Like, I thought it was fine the way it was. The Keyblade Graveyard is supposed to be kind of barren, though. You saying. know what I mean? Like, you kind of have to keep that in mind. I thought the whole, like, um... The whole maze thing, like I thought that was sick. Dude. Yeah, I was, was like, was, dude, this is insane. crazy. And and we'll get into it when we talk about the music, but the soundtrack is fire. Oh my god, god, dude, yeah, dude. The Keyblade Graveyard, like I said, it was everything that I expected it to be. I didn't expect. That's the thing, though. I didn't expect a lot from it. I was just like, okay, it's the Keyblade Graveyard. Like that's that's cool. It's great. I thought it was fine. Um, the one thing I I did hate about that was, was like when you were hit with those giant tornadoes. And like the enemies were like <laughs> fucking huge, oh, and it was so sleep, annoying. Dude. Yo, that shit was whack. Thank God that took that was taken out. Thank God. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Um. Then other than that, I mean, I don't think. I mean, there's Scala at Kylum, but you know that was. I mean, well, yeah. I, I mean, I think we should talk about it. Yeah. Though. So Scala, like, I, you know, it, fucking beautiful. Yeah, dude. I definitely feel like there's a a big importance to that world that we don't know. Oh, Sorry. dude, getting ahead, of, getting ahead of myself. Did you? Like, did I, you? Did you see the? Wait, were you paying attention during the Xehanort boss fight? And fucking the clock tower from Daybreak Town is underneath it in the water. Yup. Wow. The thought they went into designing that town is just was insane. The I'm thing, so yeah. I'm so sad it wasn't explorable, that's, dude. I'm see, so that's sad. my beef with it. You can't even go back when you're done because your your auto save from like your last possible save point is before that battle. So you can't even go back and like run around and explore it. Like that oh, that kind of annoys true. me. That kind of annoys me a little bit. Yeah, no, I agree with you, dude. And like I was like I was so hyped about that. I was like, dude, what is this like i wanted to figure out all the mysteries about it i was like like i wanted to see that i thought it was gonna be like this huge world and i was just like wow yeah so i mean scala it, it was no um it was no end world like i thought it would be you know it, it, it is what it is it's fine um Scala was Scala. It is, it, is, it is really cool because none of us really knew it existed until like that trailer like right before um the game came out like i think it was like a month or two in that final battle trailer and i was just like whoa like yeah. like that really caught me off guard i was just like holy shit so it was a little bit disappointing but i think overall the, the, the place is really cool and i think it's like a cool place for the final battle i just think they you know it would have been cool if there was more to it 100 percent. okay so i think that that's all of the disney worlds um the final the final world oh yeah i thought that was fire too i had so much fun doing that I, I thought the, the, the whole um, the thing was cool, but I thought, like, the, the hologram thing was, like, a, I don't know. I was just like, why? <laughs> like, why is this, like, a thing? <laughs> it's Krabs 2.0, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Krabsora, Krabsora, Krabsora. Fuck Krabs, it, fuck holograms. It, it was <laughs> kind of cool and interesting. And, you know, if you went back there and collected 333 of the things, you get, like, an HP boost. I actually didn't know that because I, I, to be to be quite honest, I didn't really know what to do if I went back. Like I actually I went back because I'm a stupid idiot. I was rushing through the game and I missed the cutscenes with Strelitzia and uh, Namine, and I I feel hey, so it's not stupid. Confirmed that it's bro. Closer. It's shut up. It's Strelitzia. <laughs> I don't. Well, honestly, really, I missed them too. It's not really a scene. You mean more so like the the text thingy. 
Well, no, no, right? no, dude. If you go to a specific star, I think I don't know if you have to read all of them or not because obviously I missed it. But like, if you go to a specific star, there's voice. There's like a voiced cutscene where Sora sits down and he's talking to a mystery girl, and then there's another yeah. one where he sits down and he's talking to Namine because Namine says it's her and stuff. But there's a girl with a new voice that we've never heard before, and people think it's Strelitzia. It's pretty obvious. It's yeah, her. I, yeah. I actually, I, I think I missed that. I think my um, a buddy of mine was pointing that out. And he was like, oh, he was like, did you talk to, to Namine? He was like, oh, she actually talks. And I was just like, oh, dude. And I was like, I fucked up. <laughs> I fucked up. I'm so mad. When I upload that episode of my Let's Play, if people actually are like, because I have a couple people that comment and stuff, they're going to be like, dude, you idiot. I'm going to be like, yeah, I know. I was trying to rush through the game so I could start using YouTube and Twitter <laughs> And again. the thing was, is I wasn't even trying to rush. I just thought I had talked to them all. Me right. too. Because like, you can't see them. I talked to so all of them like, too. I, that that shouldn't have been like a skippable thing. I don't know why the fuck they did that. Like I thought that was so like like why why like I don't. I skipped it on accident too, so I agree with you. Yeah, like I was like, what the hell? Like I was watching someone else stream it, and then I saw this cutscene. I was like, what? Like <laughs> like what? <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, no. So overall, I think that's but, all yeah. the worlds. Like the worlds were sick. <laughs> I thought they were fire. Um, I keep saying fire. I need to. They were they were blazing. <laughs> they were blazing hot. They were smoky. They're blazing. They're yeah. fire. <laughs> they were very above par. Hell yeah. They're fan freaking test. 